what does this actually mean? Yeah, so the WMO is talking about sort of a temporary blip above 1.5 degrees, which is different from what the IPCC talks about when they refer to global temperatures breaching 1.5. That's more of a longer average, mm -hmm. which we're currently projected to do in sort of the early 2030s. And exactly when is sort of a matter of definitions, which I guess is kind of a, a minor detail in the biggest story. And the biggest story is that the world is very likely to hit 1.5 degrees and probably fly past it right onto two. That is quite concerning because, yeah, 2030s is certainly when we thought. But I assume there's some variation within, and this is just kind of a worst case scenario of a couple of things coming together at the same time, right? Yeah, that's right. We have, we have background warming, which everyone hopefully knows about by now, but also we're predicted to have quite a strong El Nino event. And so mm. during El Nino, what happens is that there's just more heat in the atmosphere as opposed to it all being stored in the oceans. And so in previous years, the hottest years on record have always coincided with an El Nino event. And so a strong El Nino in the next five years could just be what tips us into over 1.5 temporarily. It'll come back down for a bit again until about 2030. Why was 1.5 degrees chosen? Good question. It, it is a very human metric. The mm. planet isn't suddenly fine at 1.4 and then becomes bad at 1.5. It, yeah. It's quite an academic decision and it's chosen based on impacts that we think that humans can manage. But at the end of the day, every part, bit of degree warming is, is not good and we need to stop that. Um, I always worry that hum, humans kind of become desensitised to these ever falling records and forget what 1.5 and 2 actually mean. And at 1.5 degrees, the Great Barrier Reef will probably be dead within my lifetime. These are very serious impacts that we need to pay attention to. Now, you and I both, well, I have a science background. I'll say <laughs> you're a scientist currently. Uh, it's very rare you get 98% certainty on anything. Obviously, there's some error bars there. Is, is there a chance that this isn't going to happen? I mean, I guess the flip side is a 2% chance. And in order for that, to not occur, we would either need no El Nino in the next five years. Mm. And that looks very likely at the moment, right? Very unlikely. Oh, like very likely that we will get one. Yes. I mean, <laughs> yeah, sorry. We're quite on track to getting an El Nino yeah. probably by the end of this year. The other option is if we have a giant volcanic eruption near the equator that spreads a whole bunch of ash and deflects some of the solar, incoming solar radiation for a bit, which we've seen in the past, for example, in 1883 when Krakatoa in Indonesia it erupted and cooled temperatures temporarily. But that is also a very unlikely scenario. Yeah, uh, let's let's not go for massive volcano <laughs> uh, on the equator, but hopefully just to avoid some warming. Uh, tell me, how does this make you feel? As somebody who's you know, in climate science and atmospheric science, uh, what's your gut feeling here? I'm not surprised, but I'm disappointed and increasingly frustrated that we've known this has happened, going to happen for decades. We've known what the solution is for decades, yet global emissions have still been rising year on year and we're just not doing what we need to do to actually abate this. What is that? Stop increasing emissions and start reducing them to zero. No other way around it? No, there's no other way. <laughs>